Amen. Well, it's great to be here with the family today, man, and to be able to go into the Word of God together. Uh, I want to lift up uh, Kaseya for the powerful communion. Where is Kaseya at? Where is Kaseya at? That was uh, that was awesome. Uh, great, uh, great young man. He sounds like a preacher. I, I think I think Kaseya may need to be a preacher right here. Uh, even his uh, his his prayer sounded like a sermon right there. Uh, so that was uh, that was awesome. Uh, so thank you, bro, for sharing your heart. Uh, thank you, Hannes, for the contribution charge as well. And uh, just uh, calling us to give uh, generously. And Johannes is leaving it out. He's been generous. He sold it to uh, his PlayStation. And he's uh, willing to uh, willing to give even more. Amen. Uh, so uh, it's great to be here together today. It says in Matthew 11, verse 12. Matthew 11, verse 12. I got the old NIV here. It says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. And forceful men lay hold of it. The title for the charge today is Forcefully Advancing the Kingdom of God. The title is not Comfortably Advancing the Kingdom of God. The title is not casually advancing the kingdom of God. The title is forcefully advancing the kingdom of God. And he says that forceful men lay hold of it. So we need forceful men, men to lead the charge. As well as forceful women in a, in a sisterly way, amen. You don't want sisters being like brothers, amen. But, but we still need forceful men and women of God. The world is forcefully advancing its own agendas. Atheism is forceful advancing. Sweden, third most atheistic country in the world. That is, that is right here where we live. People preaching the word of atheism. People go, I believe in science. Again, science grew out of a Judeo-Christian worldview. Did you know that? You have China, you have great sci- uh, discoveries such as gunpowder, Fireworks, they never had a systematic method for starting out nature. Why? Because you need a God for that. You see, because the Jews, they believed in a God, and Christians believe in a God. That's why even the forerunners of science, that's why they uh, researched the law in nature, because they believed in a lawgiver. So since there is a God, there is a creator, that's why you would expect to have law, order, structure in the universe rather than chaos. So you wouldn't even have science without a Christian God. (laughs) You wouldn't have science. And yet people say, well, I believe in science, so I don't believe in God. Islam is forceful advancing. The fastest growing religion is not Christianity, it's Islam. Islam. They predict that Muslims will grow more than twice as fast the overall world population between 2015 and 2016. Islam is forcefully advancing. LGBT is forcefully advancing. You come here while greeted by rainbow flags. Just this past week, uh, it was my birthday, amen, that uh, 37 years old. I don't know how I got to be 37. I never thought I would be 37. So, uh, but it's, uh, God is great. Uh, thank you uh, uh, all for your encouragement, for the sharing, uh, for the presence, uh, for all the things. Uh, very grateful for my family in Christ. But I saw that it was on that very day an article came out. Sweden passes law lowering age to legally change gender from 18 to 16. And that is, that is happening at this, at this very moment. And again, uh, it got passed in the, in the, in the parliament. Most, most vo- vo- voices for, some against. It got passed. And the article says that a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, where a person may experience distress as a result of a mismatch between their bio- biological sex and gender, they identify as will no longer be required. So you don't even need the diagnosis to be able to do that. They say Sweden has seen a sharp rise in gender dysphoria cases. This is particularly visible among 13 to 17 year olds born female with an increase of 1,500% since 2008, according to the Board of Health and Welfare. So either there is a pandemic starting, or 
because certain trends are forceful advancing. Our grandparents did not struggle with gender dysphoria. Again, forcefully advancing the different ideas. In Scotland, misgendering someone is now a hate crime. It's a crime. It's a crime. You get criminal charges for misgendering someone. It's against the law you become a criminal. Who is fighting against that? J.K. Rowling? Popular children's book, have you heard? Just the order. Okay, adult book, adult book, amen, amen. I know some of you may be, may be sensitive on this topic. Adult book. And she fights against it, well, arrest me then. <laughs> She's the one speaking against that kind of stuff in Scotland. <laughs> she goes, arrest me then. Because again, you get to choose whatever you want to call, be called, but I don't have a choice. So for the sake of your freedom of speech, my freedom of speech is taken away. But again, to now go against this Scotland, it's criminal. Criminal charges. So J.K. Rowling may soon become a criminal for misgendering people. What do you mean? What do you identify as? You want to try it at the bank? I identify as a billionaire. I want to take out 500 million. Your, your bank account shows 350. Not billions, but crowns, sir. Well, now you're misidentifying me. I don't identify as poor. I identify as a billionaire. And now you become a criminal. All the thoughts are forcefully advancing. Of course, on, on uh, Thursday, we had a great Bible talk, uh, with the Unbroken Bible Talk, and we call it identity theft. <laughs> because it says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he wants to steal away your identity. Just this past week, you got a couple of emails. We have approved your uh, Bitcoin purchases. And I'm like, I haven't purchased any Bitcoin. <laughs> so it's called phishing. <laughs> they got phishing for you. <laughs> they want your information. So that they can commit identity theft, identity fraud. But that's really what Satan is doing and has always been doing. If you are the son of God, making us doubt our identity. Are you really a man? I mean, you, you kind of have some feminine tendencies, so maybe you're a woman. Are you really a woman? I mean, you, 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 you like to lead everything, so maybe you're a man. Identity theft. We need the kingdom of God. Forceful advancing, amen. Yeah, Let's go to Acts chapter 16. You guys sound quite quiet. You, you're doing okay. You had a quiet time. You're doing uh, good in a relationship with God. So we don't believe in a, in a silent church, amen. If you guys go silent, I'm going to go silent. You want me to go silent? Okay, then you got to preach back to me. Okay, I preach to you. You got to preach back to me. What is the church of God? It's not a cruise ship. You jump on a cruise, you know, you, you have your, you know, whatever, uh, you know, drinks and, and then the fruit and the chilling and you go to a jacuzzi. You know, it's a battleship. It means all hands on deck. You come here, you come on a battleship. Okay, what is, what is my role? How can I serve what I need to do? We're at war against Satan and his kingdom. First point, forceful discipling. Forceful discipling. Let's go back to 16. I'm going to be in Acts 16 today. I've been very inspired by this chapter. Acts 16. And it says here in verse 1 about Paul. This is the second missionary journey. And it says in Acts 16 verse 1, He came to Derby and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived. Now, Paul did not have the best, uh, most fond memories of that place because that's where he was stoned previously. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm going to go back for a rematch. I'm going to go back there. I'm going to have a good memory. Sometimes you need to go back for a rematch so that you can turn that loss into victory. He goes back and he gets one of his main guys, Timothy. And he says his mother was a Jewess and they believe her, meaning she was a disciple. So in the New Testament, the believer is a Christian, is a disciple. So mom was a disciple. But his father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and the Conium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on a journey, so he circumcised him. Because of the Jews who lived in that area. For they all knew his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, 
they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to consider, to obey, to obey. The first century church consisted of two radically different groups. You would have the Jews who believed in God. They believed in scriptures. They believed in morality. <laughs> and you had the Gentiles. And they were just wild, like you and me, amen. Was it just me or? You remember your life before? Before you became a disciple? Man, you did some wild stuff. You did some wild stuff. I mean, some of us, we, we set stuff on fire. Some of us, we... I mean, we just like, were vandalizing some of us. I mean, it was it was bad, bad. So don't forget where you have come from, okay? So, so I don't know if you got any Jews, but we got a bunch, a bunch of Gentiles here, amen? So you get to be grateful for Jesus Christ, that you get to be a disciple as a Gentile. And also some of the Jews, though, they came, and they started advocating the teaching, you cannot be saved unless you get circumcised. Meaning... Even the Gentiles, Christians, would have to get circumcised. In essence, you have to be a Jew to be a Christian. You have to keep the law of Moses to be a Christian. And it's almost split the church. Let the split in Christianity. So they got together for a central council in Jerusalem. And James, who became the leader of the Jewish Gentile unified church, he makes a decision for the whole movement. No. You don't need to get circumcised. They don't need to get uh, keep the law of Moses to be saved. Just make sure the Gentiles keep away from food sacrificed to idols. Keep away from blood. Eating blood. I mean, some of us were like blood pudding and, and stuff. They, uh, they couldn't do that during that time, amen. Just to keep the unity in the church, they didn't eat blood pudding, okay? Even, uh, not even blood quarter. You know, no, uh, no blood, uh, blood quarter. Okay? And that they were not sexually immoral. And they sent the decision for the people to obey. <laughs> Not consider about obey. Meaning there is a place for church authority. The whole church is going to be doing this. The leaders made a decision and everybody had to obey it. And so Paul goes to Timothy and says, you know how you know, the central decision was made? Uh, for Gentiles not needing to be circumcised. Yeah, yeah, bro, clear, clear as day. So Paul goes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, we are going to be evangelizing a lot of Jews, though. Ah, uh, so even if it's not a salvation matter, it would really help the forceful advancement of the gospel if you were to get circumcised anyway. You talk about the challenging D time, okay? How are your D times going? <laughs> Again, we as a church who believe in discipling. <laughs> Based on Matthew 28, you teach them to obey all the commands of Christ. And you would get together with your teacher or discipler, and you would have a discipling time or a deed time. So Paul had a deed time with his son in the faith to be Timothy. And who circumcised Timothy? Well, let's send it to the doctor to do it. No, I'm going to do it. <laughs> how, is, how is your discipling going? You see, Timothy was ready to have a procedure done in his uh, private areas. To aid the forceful advancement of the gospel. So the question is, are you ready to have the sensitive areas of your life addressed to forceful advance the gospel? You see, this was a disputable matter. Paul couldn't have shown anything from scripture to Timothy that it was mandatory for him to do it. But it was helpful to forceful advance the gospel. So are you willing to be discipled on disputable matters? Things that if you were to change that, where to contribute to the gospel forcefully advancing. Don't you pray, appreciate discipling in your life? Discipling. Again, discipling uh, builds character. And discipling just uh, cuts off a bunch of stuff in, uh, in your life. <laughs> just as Timothy, man. Uh, and really, uh, we went to London National Diet to be trained in the ministry. And again, I was eager to get to action. Hey, like, so let's just go evangelize. Let's do stuff. Michael's like, if you don't have a home, you don't have a ministry. I said, okay, let's, let's find a home right here. Uh, second lesson, so goes your marriage, so goes the church. It's like, you got to work in a marriage. She's the church. You got to crank your ministry. You got to crank your wife. Amen. And, uh, and usually we, uh, we, we have the, the staff meetings for the church. And uh, we, we had some discipling after, after that. 
And usually we have a principle that whatever happens in Lion's Den, that's the discipling group called, uh, or a staff stays at Lion's Den. Uh, so at that Lion's Den, I got the nickname Casper Nova. <laughs> so you, well, you, you know, you're married, you, you gotta be like this, you know, Casanova. You know, and somebody says, oh, Casper Nova. <laughs> and so I was hoping for it to stay in Lion's Den, but it leaked out, man. <laughs> it leaked out. It leaked out. Uh, then I got my second nickname, Caspart, and I was like, yeah, I like this one. This is an awesome nickname. So, and then it kind of became the combination Caspar and Nova. So, hey man, you know, I'm, I'm, God is good. God is good. But it's discipling. Discipling has made you into who you are. And you need discipling to make it and to fulfill God's purpose in your life. Timothy means honoring God or dear to God. You see, it honors God when you let yourself be discipled on disputable matters. If you get discipled on, you gotta lose weight. Get a haircut. So change your clothing. Put on some muscle. Bro, the teens will respect you more if you put on some muscle. <laughs> Can you be discipled on your parents? Since you gotta be better at putting on makeup. <laughs> Sensitive area. Can you be discipled on your parenting? <laughs> That's how you got a parent in the kingdom of God. Move close to the city center. Move out from your parents. Get a different job or a second job. Or some people, you should work less to be available in the ministry more. Or she's not a good sister for you to date, bro. She doesn't aspire leadership. Discipling on disputable matters. Some of us felt, felt challenged on, on a few of those points. So what will need to get circumcised from your life? What ears need to be cut from your life? Cut the pride from your life? The independence? The worship of self? I know what is best. No, you don't. What in your life says that you know what is best for you? What in your life shows it? People go, well, prove me God. Any, any God I could prove to you would be an idol. Any God who would fit in my one and a half kilo brain would hardly be worth proving. God is outside of time, matter, and space. How do you prove that? <laughs> How do you prove that? The difference is, I'm honest, I have faith. You have faith, but you're lying about it. You say, no, no, I don't have Yes, you do have faith that there is no God. It's an issue of faith. Just change your faith. You don't have to believe what you believe in. Believe in the truth. So you're not going to have forceful advancement without Forceful discipling. Is that how you take discipling? You can be a cat or you can be a dog. You know cats? Just nowhere to be found. Where's the cat? <laughs> out, out doing their own thing. <laughs> you know how dogs are, they come to you and it's like, oh, they just, you know, fired up and wagging the tail. Oh, I'm happy to see you. Let's spend time, you know. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, you know, who are you? <laughs> you cat or the dog? In discipling. So Timothy was circumcised. He was discipled on disputable matters. And he says in verse 5, so the churches were strengthened in the faith. You see, leadership provides unity which strengthens faith and grew daily in numbers. Imagine the church getting daily additions. Everyday souls being saved. At the Paris, uh, women stay five, five women. The following day, somebody else got baptized, a basketball player. Uh, great athlete. Again, daily additions. We need daily additions in all the churches, including Stockholm. Second point, forceful advancing God's vision. Forceful advancing God's vision. Acts chapter 16, let's read on, verse 6. And it says, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When it came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia. You see, first of all, they were trying to go to a certain place, but the Spirit blocked them. So we don't know what was going on, whether there was war, pandemic, or something else, but they were blocked. 
So sometimes the spirit blocks you. You want to date somebody, the spirit blocks you. <laughs> you want to get a certain job, ah, awesome job, the spirit blocks you. <laughs> Man, you know. Because God knows what is best for you. So he will block some things. And so they got down to Troas, where was Troas? On the east coast of the Mediterranean. Meaning he reached the end of the line. You get and just the Mediterranean. What next? What am I going to do? And that's where they got the Macedonian vision. Standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. A man of Macedonia. Some believe that the vision was of Macedonian Alexander. Because how will he know that he was a Macedonian man? He got a Macedonian vision. Now, where was Macedonia? In Europe. Macedonia was in Europe. So Paul had the Macedonian vision, the European vision, the Eurovision. You see, the real Eurovision is not a song contest. It's the evangeliz evangelization of all of Europe. I pray you have the Eurovision today. That you're dreaming that you have vision for an evangelist Europe. The Eurovision. Verse 10. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave from Macedonia. Concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel of God to them. And he says, we got ready, meaning Luke was there in person. Because Luke was the one who wrote the, uh, the book of Acts. And Paul was the one who got the vision. You see, the vision of God comes through the man of God. And the others got behind the vision that Paul had. They had seen it as a vision from God. So if you like the clear vision in your life, Embrace the vision the man of God in your life has for you. What is our vision this year? 60 disciples. 60 disciples. And if you are a member of the church, we need every single disciple sharing with 39 every single day. And we're going to preach this until it is a reality. We had a great talk with Eric and Michelle this past week. Uh, and, you know, they may not be as tech savvy as, as some. And so, like, how do, how do we do this 39 a day thing? And we showed them, and it's like, oh, it actually goes pretty fast. So, Eric and Michelle are on it now, amen. They're sharing with 39 a day. And your applause showed what the issue is with the church. There is deadness in the church. I'm giving you my heart. You're not giving me your heart. You guys are very silent. You, you, there is a lack of zeal. Let me, let me read you a scripture, Romans 12. This is, there is sin going on in the church. There is sin. Romans chapter 12. It says, Romans 12, verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal. Yes. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Yes. What does a one out of ten applaud look like? One out of ten fired up in this. Yeah, that's, that's, okay. Well, what about two? <laughs> so basically, that's what you guys have been sounding like today. What does three sound like? What about four? What about five? What about six? What about seven? What about eight? What about nine? What about ten for Jesus Christ? Fire up church. Fire in the church. We need fire in the church. We're not going to tolerate lukewarmness. We're not going to tolerate a dead church. So that level of seal is the issue. That is the issue. That is the issue. We need every single disciple fired up. Sell us for God. Every single disciple. We need a hard reset going into this year. At this pace, we're not going to evangelize Sweden. Which means we got to pick up the pace. Do you have someone you're making into disciple at this very moment? Everyone, every day, with glad and sincere hearts. Say it with me. Everyone, every day, with glad and sincere hearts. Say it again. Everyone, every day, with glad and sincere hearts. Doesn't say with a bitter heart. A bad attitude. So first of all, everyone. We need everyone evangelizing. Everyone. Making disciples. Because that is the church of God. If it's not everyone, it's not the church of God. Everyone. Do you have someone you're making into a disciple? Isn't it awesome to baptize someone? Got some wet sleeves going on? Wet sleeves are awesome. So you just baptize someone. <laughs> and it was great. We're having, uh, having our, uh, service before with the kids' kingdom work. And we're like, okay, all of us will baptize someone. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was great. 
everybody's got to be making disciples. Every day. Because what you do daily shows who you really are. It's not a cool thing we do on Saturdays. No, no, that's who you are. That's who you are. A disciple. With glad and sincere hearts. Because if you're doing stuff but you don't have a glad and sincere heart, again, God's not going to bless it. Glad and sincere hearts. So it's that you, everyone, every day, with glad and sincere hearts. And Christian was there in, uh, th- uh, there in Kiss Kingdom, and we're like, okay, you're Baptist, Anastasia, who's next? Okay, Jesse, who's next? <laughs> who's next? Crystal, who's next? <laughs> she Baptist Negan, but who's next? Again, don't settle. Don't settle on a journey to greatness. On a journey to the promised land. We need every single disciple walking around with wet sleeves. <laughs> because they baptized someone. And that was the strength of the church in the first century. Everyone was fully committed. Have you embraced Eurovision? The vision to evangelize all of Europe. What mission team will you be part of? Who's going to go to Denmark? Who's going to go to Oslo? Who's going to go to Finland? What about the mission team to Stockholm, Sweden? Do you see yourself as a missionary to Sweden? When we came, we are a mission team, meaning we cannot lose the mission and we cannot lose the team. Because that's going to kill us. Have you lost the mission? Have you lost the dream? The team? Because again, we are missionaries, not just abroad. We're missionaries right here. Again, we are the team to make it happen. Do you see it as your personal responsibility to evangelize this nation? That Jesus is calling you personally. Evangelize the nations. 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 Do you see it as a calling from Jesus? So what's going to be a response? And you're like, that's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> or do you think, well, somebody else is going to do it. I mean, they're going to share. They're going to get studies for sure. I mean, the interns will do it. I mean, they. Well, I mean, Casper, I mean, he's the church leader, so he's going to do it. That's, that's not the church of the Bible. There's no clergy and late in the church of the Bible. Everybody is a fully devoted disciple. Who's going to baptize the mission team? Or like, well, when is somebody going to hand me a team? That's, that's not how this works. <laughs> that's not how this works. we got to gather. you got to gather your mission team. Okay, let's move on. Forceful advancement brings great conversions. Forceful advancement brings great conversions. I don't remember if we read uh, verse 10. Let's just reread it. It says, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once. (laughs) So they got behind the vision to leave from Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Verse 11. From true us, so the end of the line, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace. And from there on, uh, from the next day on, to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi. Ever read Philippians? That's the place. A Roman colony and the leading city. So they didn't go out to, you know, Yokmok in the middle of, you know, no. Leading city. Main place. That's where we're in Stockholm. That's why we're not in Yokmok. Or Kiruna. I mean, awesome, but we, we, we gotta be in the main city. Of the district of Macedonia. And we stay there several days. On the Sabbath, so that's Saturday, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. Now, it took 10 Jewish men to start a synagogue. What, what's the implication? There were no 10 Jewish men to rise up and start a synagogue. There weren't 10 men who were going to go, hey guys, we need a synagogue, let's do something. They didn't have it. They didn't have it. So, so they would gather at the river place of prayer. And it says, we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered. Are there any women in the house today? Start speaking to the women. And it says that one of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, which was Asia Minor, who was a worshiper of God. We need Asians in the kingdom, amen. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized. It didn't take them years to get baptized. 
It didn't take them years. It doesn't take you years to repent. I mean, the process of repenting, that means you're still enjoying your sin. She got baptized right away. <laughs> and it says, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, a disciple, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. So you have to be a pretty powerful woman if you're going to persuade Paul the Apostle. Amen. So what is the point? The first European conversion was Lydia. So the Macedonian man turned out to be an Asia minor lady. Amen. And what you find is that Jesus elevated women at a time where in the Roman census, they didn't even count the women. The women literally did not count. But Jesus, he elevated women. He first of all appeared to the women after his resurrection. Again, he elevated women. And Lydia, she was a businesswoman. Because what do we need? We need ministers and millionaires. So either you got to be somebody, I'm going to work as little as possible, and I'm effective in the ministry, so I should be in the ministry. Or somebody who's going to go, I'm going to earn a lot of money and give it generously to the kingdom. One of the two. She was a businesswoman. Let's go to Acts 18. Acts 18. I pray you're reading your Bible. What are you learning? I pray you got some nuggets to share. <laughs> when I get with my guys, I'm like, give me some nuggets. And don't give me like, like a weird nugget. Is that a nugget of like gold or is it like, what is that? It's a strange, strange material. Don't give me strange nuggets, eh, man. But you got to dig for nuggets. You got to dig for gold. <laughs> gold is awesome, but you got to dig for it. Check this one out. It says in Acts 18, verse 5. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. And so you had the Macedonian churches established. There was Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea. Those were the Macedonian churches. And then Paul, he left Macedonia. He went on to Achaia, where you had Athens, and you would have Corinth. And here in Acts 18 is how Paul gets to Corinth. Now he doesn't have the funds, so he has to get a secular job. Sometimes you have to be a ministry guy who gets a secular job, amen? <laughs> I've done it. I've done that. I've done that. You want to see the self-supporting interns? Like, yeah, amen. <laughs> we need to get him full time, though. And, and, and he's going to baptize a bunch of people. So. And then, like, actually baptized. He used to baptize people, but he didn't know he had to make them into disciples. So let's, let's do it right this time around, amen. And so, well, what you notice is that when Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, they came with the funds for Paul to be able to go full time. Check out Philippians 4. Philippians 4. And it says in verse 14. And it reads, Yet it was good of you to share my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, so that's Philippi, right? We can forget it. Oh, Philippians is Philippi. All right. <laughs> Profound, right? <laughs> In the early days of her acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia. And that is Acts 17. He established the church in Philippi, then in Thessalonica, then in Berea, and then he leaves Macedonia. He goes to Athens in, in, in Achaia. So that is what he's referring to. When I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. <laughs> So this newly established church became a great example in financial giving. Baby church. I mean, just freshly started. And it says, for even when I was in Thessalonica, because that's where he went from Philippi, right? You sent me aid again and again when I was in need. <laughs> Not that I'm looking for a gift, but I'm looking for what may be credited to your account. Do you see that Paul... He raised special missions. But more specifically, he was the one who left. Silas and Timothy were the ones who guided the special missions and brought it to Paul. 
So again, this freshly started church in Philippi became a very financially sacrif uh, sacrificial church. Now it helped to have a rich uh, businesswoman there, of course, amen. Uh, but they, they supported the mission. And of course, uh, this spring, we're doing our special missions contribution, amen. And currently, we are at 53.4% of our 227,000 uh, crown go. And that is, that is awesome. We have, uh, we have made progress. No, don't relax, though. Still got 106,000 to go, so don't be like, you know, oh, yeah, man. It's like, <laughs> we still got, still, still got work to do, amen. Still got work to do. I mean, we like meeting at this place. I think it's nice. They don't let us meet here for free. They're like, show us the money. We're like, but we love you. No, show us the money. <laughs> okay, they, they, they want some money. <laughs> yeah, the missionaries. The missionaries need, need financial support so that they can be in the ministry and do ministry. And again, it's great to think. I mean, uh, Ryan's baptized somebody. Mission team member. Jenny has baptized more than one. Uh, I baptized somebody. Actually, has baptized somebody. <laughs> Liam baptized somebody. Kaseya. I think it's a decent investment. Some of you wouldn't be here if you if if the mission team hadn't come, reached out to you. How much is the salvation worth? And how much is the salvation of somebody else? Because now it's like, okay, now I'm saying, now I'm gonna, now okay, <laughs> now I'm gonna pass it forward, <laughs> give it on to someone else. So we st still got uh, five weeks to go, amen. Uh, two uh, two bay days to go. Some of us have given generous. Uh, Eric and Michelle, they have given generously. They're one of some of our biggest givers. They got to 100%. They're like, no, we're not going to stop it. We're going to go to 160%. <laughs> of the goal, that's, that's a great example. Cindy has already met hers, amen. Now, Cindy's radical. Because Cindy thought you were raising 20 times monthly, not 20 times weekly. Like, okay, let's, let's get to work. <laughs> like, I have done here. No, since you don't have to give more than one and a half years of, of, of giving in, uh, in, in, in one, one go. So, amen. But, uh, but that's her faith. She's like, okay, <laughs> what do we need? Let's make it happen. <laughs> that's, that's her heart. Christian has given. Christian has given. Christian has given. She's making great progress. Uh, young disciples making progress because they are honestly making progress. Some of us have given zero. And again, you know, I pray that you have a good plan. Because if you're failing to plan, you're planning to fail. And then you're like, That's, that was my plan to fail. I was planning on giving zero to God. If you're giving to God it's zero, you should not be in this, in this church. You shouldn't be here. Because obviously you don't believe in what we're doing. Now, if you have an awesome plan of how to meet it at the end of May, awesome. Although, you know, ideally start earlier. <laughs> but if you don't have a plan, then what are you waiting for? Are you planning to fail? You're willing to sell some stuff? We read about the, the, the rich young ruler. He said, do sell everything and then come follow me. Yet some of us struggle with the thought of selling even a few things. Now, you don't have to sell stuff if you have a d d different plan. If you have a different plan, awesome. Awesome. You know, but make it happen. Make it happen. Let's go back to Acts 16. I pray that you're inspired by the Philippian church and their frequent giving. And again, last, uh, last year we, we raised more than 30 times weekly for a young church. I mean, very, very proud of the church. Very proud of the church. Act 16. So, of course, we see that this great businesswoman got, got baptized. And now, of course, we have our uh, Women's Day coming up. Amen. That's just in a, in a couple of weeks. Just in a couple of weeks. Uh, what is our, our prayer goal? Uh, 40 visitors and two baptisms. 40 visitors and two baptisms, amen. So let's be praying for that. Uh, we're not just going to be us here, but we're going to have Dom and Rachel come down from London. And, uh, and, and uh, she, so Rachel, is going to speak uh, for the Women's Day, the main speaker. And uh, Dom is going to preach to the campus devotional. And of course, when we were in London, uh, they took over the South region from uh, uh, after we left. So again, the region leaders in London, great couple, and they're going to blow it up. It's going to be awesome. We also have a sister, actually, uh, who uh, was in Hong Kong, uh, but she had to return to Europe. 
uh, and uh, she's actually arriving in, in Stockholm uh, tomorrow. Uh, so prayerfully, she'll be placing membership with us next week. Eurovision! Eurovision! Well, what you find in Act 16 is that there was, say, a slave girl, and it says in verse 16, Act 16, 16, once when we were going to the place of prayer, so Luke is there, <laughs> right? He says, we, <laughs> he's still there. We were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted a future. And finally, uh, Paul drove out the spirit. And it says in verse 19 that when the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas <laughs> and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. So what you find is that they made it into a racial issue. These men are Jews. Because if you read on, it says, 22, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and a jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. And it says, they were severely flogged. Now, first of all, if a doctor writes severely, it means severely. Because Luke was a doctor. I mean, he was, he was, he was severe. He was tough. Secondly, the question is, what happened to the we? Because he goes, yeah, we went, to, we traveled. And now they, Paul and Silas, they were... And we find from 2 Corinth that also not only was Luke there, but Timothy was there. So, so it was totally a racial issue what was going on here. A racial issue. These men are Jews. And they were, they were punished. Now, you know, Paul and Silas could have said, no, no, these guys are with us as well. <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> like, let's go. They got away. Don't bring us in onto your cross, say, man. You don't want to bring other people to your cross. It's your suffering. So they're like, hey, amen. Luke and, Luke and Timothy got away. And you find the jailer. You need to have a great worship to forceful advance. Forceful advancement is fueled by your worship. Because even as they were severely flogged, jailed, in a cell, it says in verse 25, after midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them, didn't have a choice. <laughs> but they still had the worship going on. Paul and Silas, even after flogging, being jailed, praying and singing hymns to God. How much does it take for us to stop singing? For us to stop praising God? Oh, the weather, man, the sun is gone. Second winter. <laughs> and it's why it's gone. You worship the Son or you worship the Son of God? What do you worship? What do you worship? Your worship of God. Suddenly there was uh, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. So usually he would be tortured and then killed if your prisoners escape. So he was like, I'm going to skip the torture and I'm just going to kill myself. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must they do to be saved? Now, most likely this was not a, a, a spiritual question. It's like, I just want to live. <laughs> I don't want to die. What do I do? <laughs> but they were spiritual people, so they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Then what happened? They prayed Jesus into the heart. They accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's not in the Bible. If you've been taught that, sorry, you've been misled. That's not in the Bible. He says, then they spoke to the word of the Lord to him. So you got to hear the message and believe the message. And to all the others in the house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. So now the jailer is washing the wounds of his prisoners. What he called that repentance. Repentance. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. <laughs> so faith, repentance, and baptism. The jailer brought them into his house. You got to go out of the house to get baptized, man. 
and set a meal before them, and the whole family was filled with joy because they had come to believe in God. What you find is that the gospel is for everyone. The first conversion in Europe, Asia Minor lady, a rich business woman. The second person touched by the gospel doesn't say she became a disciple, but she was touched by the gospel, the slave girl. Great driven out of her. She was cleansed from the impure spirit. Thirdly, a middle class man, a <laughs> jailer. You see, the gospel is for everyone. For the rich, for the poor, for the middle class. The gospel is for everyone. Forceful ad- advancement. So guys, we have a great week coming up. Uh, we have the open mic coming up. Uh, so let's uh, fill the place with artists as well as audience. Uh, we have the Women's Day uh, coming up. And even for the guys, we, we got to be helping the sisters, amen? And just uh, bringing out a lot of women. So it's going to be a great, uh, great occasion uh, to elevate women. Forceful advancing the kingdom of God. Devote yourself to forceful advancing the kingdom of God and to God be all the glory. I'm going-